I am very proud of this organization and very proud to say I'm the commander of this organization. Let me tell you why. We underpin everything there is about the United States military. Uh, I, I tell you, uh, the Army transporters say it best. They say nothing happens until something moves. That's their motto. Now, I've got 140,000 people in this enterprise, and you will never read about one of them in the history books. We have a unit climate assessment that says they don't really mind that. They're very proud of what they do. Uh, they're excited to come to work every day because they know what they do has an impact and that they're needed. Familiar feeling, hopefully? Um, and so I'm very proud to say we're the best. And I say that because all the other ones, there's nine combatant commands. I'm one of nine com combatant commanders, and they all thank me for what we do. What happens when we face an adversary that can match us technology-wise, that has maybe the numbers uh, more than we have in both people and technology? Well, that's a problem that we've got to get after. We have enjoyed dominance in every domain for as long as I can remember. We haven't been challenged probably since World War II in any one domain, let alone all of them. But we're facing an adversary in the future that can bring problems to bear in every domain. And probably with just the use of one, cyber. Cyber is one that uh, I think I'm uniquely um, set to talk about. Not because I'm an expert in cyber, it's because I'm most damaged by it. I live in the .com, .gov, .mil domains. If, if a com another combatant command has a very top secret plan, that they've got this big deal that they want to, and I've got, the first thing I've got to do is give it to mom and pop trucking company to execute it. And why in the world would an adversary ever try to attack Cybercom or Centcom when all they have to do is go to a mom and pop place and tunnel back in through the back door? The way we bifurcate cyber defenses in this country is going to get us in trouble because the DOD domains are well defended. They're not going to get in my defenses. They don't have to. And the way we look at the civil side of defense is through a lens that I don't actually like right now. That lens says if it's not a commercial problem, there's no problem. Here's one that I believe you guys have been working on as well. You know, when I grew up, little boys and little girls, somebody wanted to be an airplane driver or a boat driver or uh, a railroad cap. You, you know what I mean? Where are those kids? Well, they're not here, and I don't know where they're going to come from. This is a problem. We've got a national problem with inventory of people willing to do these jobs. Now, autonomy may be a solution set, but that's not today. We've got a problem brewing today. Autonomy will help us down the long road, I think, but how do we shift to get the right people to the right jobs at the right time? Both pilots, mariners, truckers, all short, by the way. A gentleman by the name of General George Catlett Marshall came up with the Louisiana maneuvers. And what he decided to do was focus on the things that he could control. He could make the Army uh, work better and harder. He could go after the things that were missing and try to make those stronger. The most realistic set of maneuvers that were ever put together were done by this fine gentleman from the Virginia Military Institute's class of 1901. And it didn't focus enough, didn't focus at all on what he couldn't control. He says, I don't know if I can get any more money, but I can make us be better at what we're doing. I will tell you right now, we're not better enough at what we're doing. We dream away too many things. We don't get to the hard questions because times change. The enemy changes. Technology changes. You must force yourself. Force yourself, the more successful you've been, to be different. There was a time in my life that I passed through this archway 100 times in a day. And that says simply, you may be whatever you resolve to be. And I, I think we ought to resolve to be a little bit better. We ought to resolve to be a little tougher on ourselves at how we go after solutions and be tougher on ourselves in driving to resolution. It ain't easy. And these are interesting times. But it's our time. It's not anybody else's time. It's ours. And nobody's going to solve it 
but us.